So I don't do this much, but I wanted to jump on and share a true crime case that has been weighing heavy on my mind since it happened um, last year. And the Atlanta Police Department have yet to arrest anybody. They did make an update a few days ago, like last week, and I will share that with you guys. And hopefully they will um, arrest somebody soon. So let me just give you the lowdown. On July 28th, 2021, around 1 a.m., a woman named Emma came across the body of her girlfriend, Katie Janess, 40-year-old Katie Janess, and their pet pit bull dog, Bowie. Both had been murdered near the entrance of Piedmont Park on Charles Allen and 10th Street. And for those of you who are not from Atlanta or familiar with the area, Piedmont Park is almost like our Central Park. It's in the heart of Midtown Atlanta and it's a very busy, popular park that everybody goes to. This was not an ordinary murder. Um, this woman had basically been tortured in the park. You guys, the, the details of this are insane. And like I mentioned, as if it could get worse, the Atlanta Police Department have yet to identify a person of interest, a suspect, a motive, anything like that. So that makes me feel so safe living in the area. Um, so to give you some background on the story, Janess lived about a mile from Piedmont Park. She also worked in the area. She lived with her girlfriend or wifey, Emma, and their dog, Bowie. They may have had another dog, but I'm not, or uh, more animals, but I'm not 100% positive. It's been really hard to find things online about them. Um, I guess Katie's family has been pretty quiet after the crime occurred, so, you know, don't blame them, whatever. And then her girlfriend, Emma, has also relocated out of the city and doesn't live in the community anymore. So we will talk about that in a minute. Janice had been walking her dog and we know this for a fact because there is actually surveillance footage of her walking across the street um, with her dog near the Piedmont Park entrance. And her girlfriend, Emma, had said that Janice came by her um, restaurant, the restaurant that she worked at earlier in the evening and had told her that she was gonna go on a walk with the dog and just like, hey, love you, stopping by. There's, I've read somewhere that she like ate dinner there. I've also read that she just like stopped by, so I'm not quite sure, but either way, they did make contact earlier in the evening. She said, hey, I'm going for a walk, love ya, bye. So Emma got off of work and she went straight home. That's what she said, she went straight home. And she was like looking for Katie and the dog, but they weren't there. She was like, what the heck? So she's calling Katie, she's texting her, and there's no answer. She's like, this is so weird, what's going on? So she jumps on the Share My Location app on her phone, which might be a great thing for all of us to do. Um, share your location with somebody that you trust. So she shared her location, or she looked at her lo Katie's location, and she saw that she was in Piedmont Park, and she was like, huh, that's weird. But Katie wasn't moving. So Emma started to get concerned. So she, I've read, jumped on her bike or ran over to the park, whichever. And she got to the gate at the entrance and she said she could see the dog laying in the street because there's like a little road that maintenance workers take to go through the park. And she saw the dog laying on the street, like basically right under a street lamp and he wasn't moving. So she ran in, grabbed him hoping that he was still alive. She knew that something was really wrong, but she couldn't quite figure out what exactly was wrong. And then she turned and she saw Katie about a hundred feet away. And she ran over to her, checked for a pulse. And it was very obvious that Katie was gone. Um, Emma then grabbed her phone, called 911 and ran out of the park. The 911, um, call from this has been released so you can just google it and look it up and and listen to it and hear Emma's voice and there's somebody in the background and it's kind of wild so um, if you want to if you're interested I highly recommend you researching that the next part I want to tell you about is the injuries that Katie sustained 
and I want to give a warning right now because this is extremely graphic. This information has not left my head since I heard it, and I doubt that it will leave yours anytime soon. So if you have a weak stomach or you don't want to hear about the actual injuries that Katie sustained, again, I said, like I mentioned, she was basically tortured um, in the park right there. So. If you don't want to hear any of that, I suggest that you close out the video now. No worries. We will see you next time. Okay. So for those of you who are still here, this is freaking awful, guys. Awful. Katie died of over 50 stab wounds to the head, neck, and torso area. Over 15 of them were to her head. Parts of her skull were exposed. Um, it was kind of a frenzied attack. Um, the person didn't seem very organized in what they were doing. The cut marks were from all different directions, angles. Um, there was no method of madness in this situation. Um, so, like I mentioned, she her skull was exposed. Both of her eyelids were cut. I've read that they were cut off, but I have not been able to confirm that. I do know that they were cut at least. Um, cartilage in her nose was broken. She had cuts in her lips, like all the way down to her chin so that her mouth was just kind of open. She also had around eight or nine stab wounds to the back. Um, one of them actually punctured her lung and another went so deep that it actually cut the aorta in her heart. So they were extremely forceful wounds. There were cuts to her hands and her forearms, um, which indicate that she was defending herself, which is just awful. Um, her upper chest and torso area was significantly mutilated. She had trauma to both of her um, breasts, as well as the letters F, A, and T carved into her. Um, I won't go into too much of the mutilation of the upper torso just to kind of maintain some dignity for Katie, um, but there is an autopsy report out there if you want to go read it. There's also a large cut from her breastbone to her pubic bone, which in turn left her partially disemboweled. This attack is indicative of overkill or somebody experiencing a high emotional state while this is occurring, while the crime is occurring. And like I mentioned, as if it could get any worse, the police department has yet to arrest or name anybody as a person of interest. Not long after this occurred, there were a few more people or bodies found in parks around the greater Atlanta area. Um, and I won't lie, for a second I was like, shiitake mushrooms guys we have like a serial killer i can't go to the park i don't know what to do with my free time anymore like i was really nervous and since then um i think these other murders have been solved and um people have been arrested and what so i don't necessarily think there's a serial killer anymore um and i also would assume that somebody like this would have done something like a similar attack previous or will be looking for their next victim. Great. The investigators think that the dog Bowie probably, um, probably engaged with the killer in one way or another, um, whether that's biting him, biting them, biting the killer, um, or, you know, licking them or something. They think that he got some DNA in his mouth, which please Lord, let there be DNA. And please Lord, let the DNA already be in the system so it's an easy arrest. So they're, they're still waiting on some forensic details. There was also security cameras in the park, but guess what? They weren't working that day. Oh, great, great, that's awesome. Thanks so much. And it, of course, one of these cameras was right near the murder. But no, that one wasn't working either, so don't worry about that. 
The FBI and the Atlanta Police Department are both actively working the case. Um, like I mentioned, they released an update last week that I'll share with you in just a minute. They um, did release some footage of people who were around the park, in or around the park at the time of the murder, and they have released that. So um, there's these witnesses, and there was actually, this is wild, but there was like a guy who ran right by where Katie died, like right by her and he didn't see anything or I'm not sure. I, I actually don't even know if all the witnesses have come forward and talked to the police yet. So that's wild. You can also go online and Google witnesses for Katie Janess or witnesses and Piedmont Park murder and it should pop up. Um, so you can check that out. <laughs> and when the police announced that they had an update to release, I was very excited because as somebody, as a local in the area, who could potentially, I don't know, rub elbows with this killer at the grocery store, or on my next jog at the park, or whatever, I want this guy off the street like yesterday, obviously. And <laughs> so I was stoked when we got the update. And here it is, people. Here it is. We are getting close. I do believe this investigation is moving in the right direction. Evidence in the fatal stabbing of the woman in Piedmont Park indicates the assailant and the victim may have been familiar with one another. That's the update. Great. Great. Now, talking about the fact that she may have known her killer um her girlfriend has been accused of being involved in this case for quite a long time in fact she actually moved out of the area because she was getting death threats and she had to like block all of her social media accounts because people were sending her hate mail and all sorts of stuff so it's very interesting what do you guys think do you think that katie knew her killer or do you think it was a stranger how do you think the person or people were able to attack and kill both Katie and her dog at the same time? How did she, how did the person keep them both there? Was there just one attacker? Was there multiple people? This is crazy. And like I said, there was some overkill in this, obviously. The letters that were carved into her. Is this somebody who's suffering an emotional or mental episode, breakdown, something like that? Or is this somebody who like literally just didn't like her that much that they took that out on her? It's hard to say. Regardless. Police are asking that if anybody has any information regarding this case, um, that they call the tip line, where is it? Crime Stoppers or Atlanta Homicide Division at 404-546-4236. There's a $10,000 reward. So um, hopefully we'll get an answer to this case soon help us in this journey of getting the word out there for um so that we can get justice for katie because this is insane okay bye guys